I'm Dr. Joe Esposito, and welcome to our podcast for the health of it. Remember to subscribe to our podcasts, and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. The information presented on this program is not intended to take the place of your personal physician's advice, and it is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Discuss this information with your own physician or healthcare provider to determine what is right for you. Are you suffering needlessly? Dr. Joe can give you advice on how to naturally get well and stay well. Dr. Joe Esposito. Today we're talking about soda. And if you've listened to these shows before, we're doing a series, and the series is on the seven deadly sins of nutrition. And the seven deadly sins, if you don't know what they are, or if you do, say them with me. Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. Those are the seven foods I want you to cut back or cut out of your diet. So we're doing a, a show on each one of them. And today we're talking about soda specifically. And it's a big issue because so many people drink soda every day, multiple times a day. How many of you do that? Raise your hands. You're really putting your health in jeopardy by doing that. And of course, uh, restaurants and, and food uh, uh, services, of course, love to sell you soda. It's a really high profit item. And years ago, when I was young, they used to sweeten it with something called sugar. And now they're doing something called high fructose corn syrup. Now, high fructose corn syrup is sweeter than sugar, and it's cheaper than sugar. So if it were me, if I owned a company that sold sugary sweets and treats, uh, and I wanted to make more money and sell more product, I would use high fructose corn syrup. So from a business standpoint, it's brilliant. From a health standpoint, it's devastating because high fructose corn syrup is about 50% or 55% fructose, 45% glucose. So you got the two sugars mixed together. There's a lot of different sugars, but those two are specifically. So what happens is the body uses glucose in the cells as energy. So the body uses it. And it, it it's, it's making your brain work and your heart beat, your lungs breathe, and everything's working. The fructose cannot be used by the body. Fructose has to be converted into glucose. And that conversion occurs in your liver. And when that occurs, what happens is after about 20 grams of fructose, which is not a lot, maybe two, three pieces of fruit, the body starts producing a waste product called uric acid. Now, uric acid gets in your joints and it hurts. Now, I'm a chiropractor. I'm a pain management expert. I'm a nutrition expert. I'm an orthopedist. My concern is that if you have pain, we can give you the best chiropractic care in the world. Or maybe we can give you, a, we won't, but medical doctors give you injections or pills to cover up the pain. But if you're doing a lot of fructose, fructose is creating uric acid, uric acid gets into joints, and it hurts. Uric acid prevents the body from producing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a chemical in your body that opens up the blood vessels and allows for good circulation. So if you're not producing nitric oxide, the blood vessels can't open as well as they should, so you can't flush out the uric acid, so the uric acid builds up in the joints. So many times when I'm dealing with chronic pain patients, and I deal with them all day, every day, my team of doctors and I, we look at their diet. Because if we can get them off the sugar, and soda today specifically, we stop producing so much uric acid, and we increase the body's ability to increase circulation. We did a show, I think it was last week, on, on blood pressure. And I got so many questions. Dr. Joe, what supplements can I take? And I said, super greens and essential source. That's the core supplements. Everybody should be taking those. Those are on the website, drjoe.com. Dr. Joe's nitric oxide support. That's on the website as well. It opens up the blood vessels. And then Dr. Joe's omega-3 fatty acids. Because omega-3 fatty acids helps reduce inflammation, which can, help reduce, which can help the blood pressure to function more normally. So those are the four minimum you should be taking every day. And that's a whole other show. I won't go into that show. But sugar is a killer here because it gets into the body and causes all these problems. So you're thinking to yourself, but Dr. Joe, I am smart. I am hip. I know that there's something out there I saw in a health food store that's even better. It's called agave nectar. And agave nectar is better for me because it's not sugar and it doesn't spike my blood sugar. So when I first heard about agave nectar, I got excited. I said, wow, what is this thing? So then I did the research. It turns out that agave nectar, remember high fructose corn syrup, 55% fructose. Agave nectar, 85% fructose. One of the worst things you could put in your body is that fructose gets converted into glucose, uric acid produced, prevents nitric oxide production, uric acid gets into joints and it hurts. Wow. So just because something is sold in a health food store doesn't mean it's good, especially this product here that we're talking about. So you want to stay away from agave nectar as well. High fructose corn syrup is terrible for many, many reasons. Plain old white table sugar is still 50% fructose. 
So if you're going to do you know, plain old white table sugar, little packets, 50% fructose, 50% glucose. And in the process, that glucose gets used as fuel. And the body uses the fuel, and the body's working great, but then you put in too much f f uh, glucose. And the body says, all right, Joe, I've got enough glucose. All my cells, are f my f fuel tanks are filled. I can't take any more. So then the body says, what am I going to do with this glucose? So it goes into the liver and converts it into something called glycogen. Now, glycogen is where we store fuel. It's our energy stores. And it's in the liver, it's in the muscles, in the blood vessels. And so if I run out of glucose, my body converts to glycogen usage to make the body work. But you keep eating glucose and fructose and other types of sugars. So then the body says, wait a minute. Glucose is, all the cells are filled, the glycogen cells are filled. What am I going to do with this glucose? Got to get it out of the blood. It converts it into triglycerides. And triglycerides then get stored as fat. So you're drinking soda like crazy. One can is all the sugar you should have for a whole day. It has 39 grams. You're supposed to have about 40 grams a day. So you're right up where you should be. And now you keep drinking and you keep eating breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, regular things with sugars, other sweetened things. The triglycerides are being stored as fat. That's why you gain weight when you eat a lot of sugar. And today we're talking about soda specifically. So I can't stress enough how dangerous these sugars and sugary foods are. And like I said, it just breaks my heart when I see people doing it, knowing that so many of the healthcare problems are caused by their diet and they have to stop doing it. The nice part about nutrition is this, it's passive. You have to not do things. So if you can not do things, your body's gonna function a lot better. And what I want you to do is not eat the seven deadly sins, alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. So we talked about how the sugar converts into fat and that can lead to childhood obesity. For parents worried about the health and fitness of their children, Limiting or eliminating sugary drinks and other sugar foods, like sodas, even fruit juices, can go a long way to keep them from becoming obese. A study from Pediatrics Journal showed that children and adolescents uh, derive 10 to 15% of their total calories from sugar-sweetened beverages such as soda and fruit juice. So don't do that. It increases your risk of heart disease. My father died of heart disease. Heart disease is one of the leading causes of death in the United States, and drinking regular and diet soda has been linked to increased risk. This is research from the American Heart Association. They report that those who drank one or more sodas a day had a 25% greater risk of having high levels of triglycerides in their blood and a 32% risk of showing low levels of good cholesterol. So it raises the bad stuff, lowers the good stuff. And again, we have a substitutions now. If you're drinking soda, we have stevia sweetened soda, we have xylitol sweetened soda. Uh, monk fruit sweetened soda. Switch to that if you have to have soda. Or what you can do is get one of those so uh, seltzer makers. Seltzer is club soda. Well, club soda and seltzer. Let me give you a definition here. Club soda has salt in it. Seltzer doesn't. That's the difference. So I'd rather you drink seltzer than club soda. But you can make your own now. It's not that expensive to buy one of these things. I have one in my house. And you can make your own. And then just drink the bubbly water. Add a little stevia to it. Add some lemon juice to it. If you have to have soda and it's the bubbles that you like, just drink seltzer, okay? More things about soda. Makes you fat. 2017 study was presented at the annual Endocrine Society meeting, and it reported that ingesting sucralose, now this is artificial sweetener, not so much the sugar, but sucralose is one of the artificial sweeteners. It's one of the most popular artificial sweeteners used in soda. It can activate genes that work with fat production. Scientists put sucralose on stem cells and found that after 12 days, there were more genes expressing markers for fat creation and inflammation, plus more fat droplets in the cells themselves. So now we talk about sugar being bad. Sucralose, uh, which is a chlorinated hydrocarbon, is not good either. Now, we're going to do a show on artificial sweetener. I won't go too deep into it. But sucralose is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. What that means is we take uh, sugar and we add uh, carbon to it and we create a hydrocarbon. And so what now what happens is this, this chlorinated hydro, we had chlorine to it, I'm sorry, the chlorinated hydrocarbons, um, when they get into the body, can act like estrogen. And estrogen causes you to act like you have estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. Now, fat becomes an organ and produces estrogen. Estrogen causes you to lay down fat, which produces estrogen, which causes you to lay down fat. So you're kind of caught in a trap, as Elvis Presley once said, and you're caught in a trap. So the fatter you are, the harder it is to lose weight because you're producing estrogen. And so sucralose actually increases your, stimulates your estrogen receptor sites. And that's one of the reasons why people gain weight in many cases 
when they're using the artificial sweeteners. And there's so many other dangers of that. So if I have time, I'll go into it. If not, we'll do a whole show on that. The main source of calories in a lot of people, in a study from Tufts University, researchers found that sugar-sweetened beverages are the primary sources of calories for Americans. Holy cow. So it's not breads and cookies and cakes and donuts and pastas. It's plain old sodas. So if you're consuming three cans of soda a day with every meal, you could easily be adding 240 calories to your daily calorie budget without even realizing it. So again, just drink the seltzer, folks. Please, I'm begging you. It can make your muscles weaker. Nobody wants to have weak muscles, especially as you age. But the more soft drinks you consume, the more you can accelerate the loss of strength. Research suggests that at the International Journal of Clinical Practice, scientists found that drinking a few liters of soda per day, now that's a lot, can negatively impact your potassium levels in your body, which leads to hypokalemia, which is calcium, uh, uh, I'm sorry, potassium, and reduced muscle function. You need potassium to make your body work. The way the nerves work is like this. Again, I'm a chiropractor, I'm an orthopedist, a pain management expert. A nerve has sodium and potassium, one inside the cell and one outside the cell. And the sodium and potassium switch back and forth. And when they switch back and forth, they create an electrical current. It's called an action potential. And when the, cells, when the sodium and potassium switch back and forth, you have a problem. So hypokalemia, low potassium, the nerves don't have the sodium potassium ratio to make the nerves work, and the nerves control what? Everything. I'm a chiropractor. I want to make sure your nerves are working the best they possibly can. So if you have pinched nerves, it might cause pain. But here's the thing with nerves. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You don't feel your blood pressure, your spleen, your kidneys, your earwax, your toenails, your adrenal glands, all controlled by nerves. So you can have a pinched nerve and not know it. And that's why in our offices, we test the nerves that feel pain and we test the nerves that don't feel pain. Because if you become a patient of ours, our goal is not just get you out of pain. Our goal is get you well. And this is why patients come from all over the world to see us because they don't like being in pain. And many doctors have given up. Had a patient come in, was it yesterday, the day before? And she said she, went, she, didn't want, she, was a, she, she didn't want to do anything uh, So I talked to a neurosurgeon. Went to the neurosurgeon. Neurosurgeon laughed at her. He said, you're not a neurosurgical case. You're a chiropractic case. You need to go see Dr. Joe and his team and get fixed. And she said, yeah, but he goes, no, no, there are no buts. He says, you are not to the point of surgery. And a good ethical surgeon will tell you that. You are not a surgical case. Let's do everything first that we can possibly do to avoid the surgery. If there's nothing else we can do, then we can cut you open. But a good surgeon, I didn't even know what a surgeon was, but a good surgeon is going to tell you, let's do everything else first. Chiropractic, of course, be, should be the portal, the portal of entry when it comes to pain. And then we work our way around from there. We can maybe do uh, pain management, injections, uh, physical therapy, surgery. There's a lot of other options, but the least effect, most effective, least expensive, least invasive is chiropractic care and nutrition. That's why every one of our patients gets a nutritional workup. So we can find out what's happening in their body to get the chemistry right. So soda, of course, being one of those things that you just got to leave out of your life. Soda can also cause you to eat more bad foods. If you drink soda regularly, chances are you're going to eat a lot of processed foods, according to a study from the University of Illinois. Researchers looked at the diets of over 2,200 Americans over 10 years, and they discovered that diet soda drinkers ate more calorie-dense or energy-dense, I don't like that word energy, but it's calorie-dense, nutrient foods like cookies and ice cream. So once again, if you're drinking a lot of soda, chances are you're not a raw food, vegan, uh, plant-based person. You're probably eating a lot of junk food as well. Soda can increase the risk of pancreatic cancer, one of the worst cancers there is. Now, the reason pancreatic cancer is so bad is your pancreas does a lot of things. It's on your left side, kind of by your stomach. And the pancreas produces digestive enzymes, protease, amylase, and lipase, which is part of the digestive system to break down fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. It produces essentially a baking soda, which neutralizes the acid as it comes from your stomach into your small intestine. If it doesn't do this, you run a risk of developing uh, ulcers. And the pancreas also produces the one it's famous for is what? Insulin. So if you have pancreatic cancer, a lot of functions of absorb digestion and absorption are going to be affected. So soft drinks have been linked to an increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. And this is a study from Singapore in the journal Cancer Epidemiology. Biomarkers and prevention, this is the whole uh, journal that they do it in, the scientists attributed the, the uptick in cancer caused due to high levels of sugar, which bumps up the insulin and encourages cancer cell growth. So higher insulin is a problem because you're eating too much sugar. If you eat too much sugar, 
the cell cannot take any more sugar. Remember, we said that earlier. So the body, this, what, the way body works is the body releases insulin. Insulin goes to the cell and acts like a key, and it opens up the cell and allows sugar to go in. If the cells are full of glucose, they can't take any more. They essentially say to the insulin, stop it. I can't take any more. And the cells become insulin resistant. And then what happens is the sugar stays in the blood, and that's when it converts to glycogen and, and triglycerides and fat. But if the blood sugar is too high, it's called type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance. So cutting back on the sugar is going to have a lot less insulin production, which is going to allow the cells to function more normally, which can also lower the risk of cancer. So uh, sugar also makes your organs fat, not just your belly, but your organs. You don't have to worry about putting it on the pounds you can see. Of course, that's an issue. But I really want you to start worrying about the fat and the pounds you can't see. But those, uh, also the fat that surrounds your organs, it's known as visceral fat, and that's really dangerous. Drinking soda and other sugar-sweetened drinks have been linked to increased risk of this deadly fat. According to a study in 2016 in the uh, journal Circulation, this fat, which is thought to boost the risk of, of diabetes and heart disease, has been found in higher volumes in those who drank at least one sugary drink a day. That's all it takes is one a day. So don't think, you know, moderation, Dr. Joe. Everything in moderation. This is too extreme for me. Moderation is for monks. I want to live extreme health. And you live extreme health by having a nervous system that works properly, a digestive system that works properly, and a good diet. I take supplements every day. I can't imagine a day that goes by. I travel, I go all over the world. I speak all over the world. Um, I, I love cruising. I always take my supplements with me. They travel through security, no problem. The minimum supplements you should be taking every day are Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. They're two powders. I take a scoop of each, mix it up with some coconut milk or almond milk, shake it up and drink it. It tastes great. And I couldn't imagine not having it every day. And when patients start taking it, I hear this all the time from patients, from listeners. Dr. Joe, I can't afford not to take your Super Greens and Essential Source because I eat less. I save money on food. I feel better. I have more energy. I'm sleeping better. My love life improves. My brain function improves. There's no downside to getting healthy, folks. Well, there is. I lied to you. First man I ever lied to you? Uh -huh. There is a downside. All that junky food sure tastes good. The breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, the alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener. All those things taste good because they stimulate the pleasure centers in your brain, specifically the nucleus acubens, which releases dopamine, which essentially gets you high. So they do taste good. I'm not going to lie to you. I remember that. I used, to, I, used to be, I used to be like you. And it took me a while to get, the, get it in my head. Okay, I'm hurting myself every time I do this. So once you get that simple concept, you don't do it. I wouldn't touch a hot stove because I know of the consequences. Once I can convince you that a, no a normally functioning nervous system, normally functioning digestive system and good nutrition is the path to health, then you're going to make better decisions. Wow, those, those chocolate chip cookies sure look good, but I know what they're going to do to me. So I'm just going to pass. Thank you. And if I have one, I can't stop eating them, so I'm not going to have any. It really works. I promise you. Here's my challenge. Do everything I say for two weeks. Then go back to your other diet, your other lifestyle. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I lied to you. I'm not lying. And then you'll say, my gosh, I felt so good for those two weeks, and now I feel awful. I hear it every day. Dr. Joe, I was taking Super Greens and Essential Source. I ran out. I forgot to order more. I forgot to pick up more at your offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. And I started feeling awful again. I couldn't figure out why I was feeling awful. And I'm thinking, why do I not have energy? Oh, that's right. I ran out of Super Greens and Essential Source. And there's other supplements, too, I recommend. But they go back to that, and they go, Dr. Joe, I feel better. It's amazing. I eat better. I feel better. I got chiropractic care. I feel better. I don't get it. It's so common sense to me. I don't know why it's not common sense to you. Other things sugar can do, it can increase your hunger. Because when you eat a little sugar, you want to eat more. Because your body, when it's hungry, your body's not hungry for food. It's hungry for nutrition. And soda has zero nutrition. And so when it's, you put something in the body, your body goes, that tasted good, but nah, that really wasn't what I wanted. So it creates more hunger. And if you're drinking diet soda, that might sound like the best way to wean yourself off those sugar cravings and lose a little bit of weight. But research from the University of Sydney found that consuming beverages with artificial sweetener can actually increase your appetite. The experience of consuming sweet stuff coupled with lack of energy supply, uh, again, nutrients when I say this, can throw your metabolism out of whack and that can lead to weight gain. So this is why the study after study after study that's been done has shown that uh, drinking diet sodas can actually cause you to gain weight. And again, we're going to be doing a show on artificial sweetener, so hang on to that thought. It can also increase your risk of gout. Now, gout, 
we talked about this earlier. I didn't use the word gout, though. Gout happens when joints become inflamed. It's extremely painful. If you've ever known anyone with gout, they can't walk, they can't move. It's horrible. It's common for men 40 and over who eat a lot of meat and drink alcohol excessively to get gout. But research from the British Medical Journal has found that the risk of developing gout is linked to high soda consumption among men. We all know cut out the meat, cut out the alcohol if you have gout. Nobody seems to be talking about the soda. 12-year study reported that men who drank five to six servings of, of sugary sweet drinks a week, it's not a lot, that's less than one a day, had an 85% chance of getting this condition. Now, we covered this earlier. Fructose has to be converted into glucose. In the process, a waste product that's produced is uric acid. Uric acid gets into joints and it hurts. That's called gout. But uric acid can get in all your joints. You might say, oh, I got gout in my foot. I got gout in my shoulder. It's attacking all the joints. The ones that you're seeing are what we call clinically expressive. There's also subclinical conditions. Like, for example, if you have high blood pressure, you may not know it. That's a subclinical uh, experience that you're having. It's there. It's just not obvious to you. Then we te test your blood pressure. Oh, my gosh, your blood pressure is high. What do we do about it? Sugar can also cause lung problems. Recently, one of my very dear friends and secretaries passed away from a lung condition. Lung researchers at the university uh, in Australia have linked asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease to soda. In a study of more than 15,000 people, those who drank at least a half a liter of soft drink a day, which is a lot of people do that, had almost two times higher odds of having lung conditions. Now, my secretary had a genetic condition. She had cystic fibrosis. But I be careful. Because it hurt me when I was talking to her and I would talk about sh soda. She goes, well, no one ever told me to avoid sugars. No one ever told me sugar or sodas can affect my lungs. And that broke my heart. Why didn't the researchers, the experts in cystic fibrosis, I'm not an expert in cystic fibrosis, but these researchers, experts never told her to change her diet. And the reason is they don't know. That's why you listen to these shows, because you get information that a lot of the world, including the health professions, don't know. That's why so many health professionals listen to these shows. And if you're a health professional, thank you for tuning in because I give you information that you then can take back to your patients. But I give it to you as a patient in case your doctor doesn't listen to this show, then you can go to the doctor and say, you know what, doc? Soda can affect lung conditions. Did you know that? There was a study done not long ago proving this. Well, I didn't know that. So now you can say, well, just go to drjoe.com and you know, type in soda and you could listen to the whole show. You can share this knowledge, by the way, too. Soda can shorten your lifespan. Now, I don't, you, most people don't normally equate drinking soda with early death, but 2013 study presented at the American Heart Association meeting uh, attributed almost 180,000 deaths a year globally to beverages that are sweetened with sugar. 180,000 people a year died prematurely. Breakdown was 133 diabetes deaths, 44,000 deaths related to cardiovascular disease, 6,000 from cancer. Now, in the U.S. alone, in 2010, researchers connected 25,000 deaths to sugary drinks. Now, I come from a big Italian family. I've watched many people die, which is unfortunate. And none of them on their deathbeds or as they started approaching the end of their lives ever said, I'm so glad I did all those horrible things in my life. I'm so glad I did alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, artificial sweetener, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, and pastas. I'm so glad I took medications when there were ways to fix the thing without the medications. I'm so glad I had a surgery that may not have been necessary. No one has ever said that. They all say the same thing. What could I have done differently? And if I could turn back time, as Cher once said, if I could turn back time, I would do things differently. So don't become one of those people. I remember watching my uncle die with tubes in his mouth. He couldn't even breathe. He couldn't even speak. And the look on his face was just hard. And he kept reaching out from his bed as just do something for me. But he was an alcoholic. He was morbidly obese. It's a little late at that point. So again, we're all going to die. I get that. But I want to live a long life. I want to live like a candle, right? You've heard that, right? Burn bright from the moment you're lit to the moment you die. Don't become a burden to yourself and others. Take care of yourself. And it can even lead to mental decline. If, uh, while a family history of dementia can put you at risk for Alzheimer's, research from Boston University shows that drinking diet soda can affect your cognitive function and make your brain age faster. So folks, there's so many reasons why, and I've got a ton more, I don't even have time for them. You really want to cut back on those sugary drinks and sugar in general. So I, I'm running out of time. If you want to listen to this and over a thousand hours of other shows, audio and video, go to my website, drjoe.com. We have podcasts out there and iHeart and all the podcast services. You could listen there. Uh, if you want to make an appointment, come see us. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, if you've ever been in a car accident, ever, 
If the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. So don't hesitate anymore. Don't be like some of my patients. I've been meaning to do this for years. Do it right now. Go to our website, drjoe.com, D-O-J-O-E.com. Call us if you have questions. We work with people with all insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. Uh, I know if you can't come see us, I know this show goes all over the world. We can do phone consultations, uh, a telemedicine. The supplements are all on the website, Super Greens, Essential Source, uh, Nitric Oxide, Omega-3s, drjoe.com. Folks, I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening to For the Health Fit. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and I'll help you naturally get well and stay well. You can also listen to and call into my radio show live Sunday evenings from 7 to 9 Eastern Time on wsbradio.com and on a WSB Radio app.